Grant Winford has been a mainstay in the Leisure World Transportation Department for over 40 years. Actually, what year did you actually start in the Transportation Department? Um, April of 1981. Let's talk about your responsibilities. When you first came in, what were you actually doing in this department? So for a decade before I came to work here, I was an automotive equipment repair person, and that's what I got hired to do to be a mechanic for taking care of the trucks and the buses and the, um, what was new to me at that time, Cushman Utility Vehicles. I had uh, um, only worked on what we would call standard automobiles and trucks and uh, the buses were um, large but more or less the same as what I'd done for the whole decade. Just growing up through the system. Yeah, I was uh, fortunate enough to be at, at two different um, shops. Um, one that was operated by the Naval Exchange Service over in Los Alamitos for about uh, six and a half years, and in about four and a half years, um, I worked for the J.C. Penney Company in one of their garages. You know, okay. back in the day, we would have uh, um, just about every department store would have an automotive department. And, and then when I first came to work here, for about the first 15 years, I was um, more or less just another. Um, uh, shop mechanic in the shop. Um, as time went by, um, I was able to take on some more responsibility. And I got introduced to the bus service at that time from the other end of it. I always said, well, I was always uh, under the bus, and then as time went by, I, I became a guy who was over the bus. Uh, <laughs> Briefly talk about a couple of the key changes that you've either seen or you've implemented. The automotive repair portion of it has changed a little bit. The tools and the technology for diagnosing later um, engine, uh, later model engines in vehicles is a little bit different than it was in 1981. The way we've set up um, the equipment uh, procurement process is to look how we can acquire equipment that is going to come to a leisure world, serve a useful purpose, and serve it for uh, an extended period of time. And part of that has been to keep a maintenance program that we can keep all of the equipment up and running mm -hmm. and um, get a full useful life out of it. I know it, when we first came to work here, it wasn't uncommon for um, uh, pickup trucks and Cushman utility vehicles to last um, only seven What's a typical day for Grant Winford in uh, the Transportation Department? Well, we don't know, given on any start of any day, whether we're going to have, for instance, uh, a pickup truck or a, a Cushman utility vehicle that's not going to start in the yard. There's many things that could happen. Some of them are just common. Somebody left the keys on overnight. We get out and take care of it. Sometimes um, somebody's been gone for a little while to come back, and uh, uh, you know it's needs a little attention because yeah. it's been sitting for a month while somebody was away on vacation. Um, and also we, we get phone calls for people asking questions about which bus is coming by their house at what time. Um, often um, there will be um, people who um, are calling for generalized information about transportation options that are available through the city of Seal Beach, someone that we're very happy to partner with. They uh, provide uh, some no cost to the riders uh, mm -hmm. service to take our community, say, down to the pier on during weekdays um, on a regular hourly schedule or mm -hmm. up to the Ralph's and Target and Sprout shopping centers. Yeah. So um, we get that information comes through. Yes. Along with classroom yeah. orientation, the Leisure World have, bus uh, tours are also provided. Uh, the tour is a thing that we do mostly for people who have recently moved in, but occasionally we'll have somebody who's been here for two or three years and uh, don't know why, but they just haven't gotten much beyond their apartment or their mutual, and they kind of want to find out where the different amenities are at. And the tour involves going around to all of the different amenities. So the obvious is the clubhouses and what types of things go on. We spent about an hour and a half um, going around and talking about all of what you can do here in Leisure World. If mobility is a bit of a challenge, for instance, um, perhaps you don't drive by choice or 
for other reasons. Um, and you can uh, walk, um, you know, 20 or 30 feet. You can come out and get on a bus and um, you can go to any of these um, things that are a lot of fun. How many buses do you actually operate on a daily basis? So on a daily basis, currently we are operating five. So we have four buses that operate um, on a fixed route. And what that is, is that means that it's a route that has a beginning and an end in a certain time frame. So ours are 45 minute in length. They're 40 minute for the travel time and a five minute layover. That layover um, is where it begins at and it starts at the healthcare center. Stops occur at all clubhouses, the library, amphitheater, main gate bus depot, and the mini shopping center. What kind of staffing do you have just for the mini bus service? So for those four routes, we, we have um, four uh, employees each day. They work a two day on, six day off shift. They like the fact that they're retired. They can work uh, for about five hours or so in a day. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of days, they're off for six. And it's certain part of the rotation, they're off for about eight or 10 days. But when we have a full crew of part-timers, we will have 23. What's a, what, what kind of mileage are we talking about for a bus, say in a week's time? On average, on our fixed routes, um, we run somewhere in the neighborhood of about 60 miles uh, in a day. So they make seven trips, okay. and so. so that average is out to about um, nine and a half or 10 miles an hour uh, yeah. on average. <laughs> when you compare our hours to our miles. How long are the buses lasting? When I came to work here, generally it was about a 10 year cycle, approximately. Uh, there was some that didn't quite make it that far. But uh, since uh, 1987, um, the buses that we put together to spec have generally lasted 18 to 20 years. But it's not just the many buses that you cover anything that runs or rolls starts up. Um, I used to be able to say anything that runs on a carbon-based fuel, but we have a lot of electric uh, powered vehicles in, in our utility fleet. In a utility fleet, um, a lot of people use the term golf cart, but as I often kid, um, the only time any of those vehicles get onto a golf course is to do repairs to something that's on the course. They are not golf carts. Our building inspectors have a full uh, complement of seven electric uh, vehicles. It's got a little box on the back and a small toolbox for them to do what they do for their building inspections in the different mutuals. So really, you're not kidding. Anything that's rolling, if it's anything, GRF. Anything that's rolling. Yeah, so your so mechanics. Rolling. They've got to be pretty well versed. They are, yes. Yeah, I'm very yeah, proud of my mechanics, and over the uh, few decades, um, I've had um, just a great honor to work with what I believe to be some of the best mechanics in, in Southern California, and perhaps maybe this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> We're starting to see the solid white buses. Talk about that. Yeah, so we um, recently acquired four buses. We got a pair of them um, late in 2023, and the second pair of them we have got uh, fairly recently. It was late February, early March. The technology on these buses for what's under the hood is really good, much more efficient. Um, we have a great fuel injection system in these, so much so that these particular vehicles were going to be as efficient operating as our previous buses that ran on LPG, or as its common name is, propane. Mm -hmm. So we've run buses here, about half of our fleet has run on propane uh, since, the, um, since the early 80s. So these new buses, they're not electric? No, they're not, um, but they're about as efficient, as efficient as you can get out of gasoline without it being electric. Uh, and there were half the cost of purchasing electric mm. uh, okay. vehicles. But is the minibus program being pointed in a different direction? And instead of a schedule, you call a bus, they come and pick you up. 
What's your thoughts on that? They are vehicles that we had looked at um, about six or seven years ago as a possible replacement for the other half of our service, which is our access bus service. Mm -hmm. That's the fifth bus that operates um, Monday through Friday, but it's a strictly an appointment-based point-to-point uh, service for people who have very limited mobility. If the board should choose to go uh, in that direction, uh, that um, we would hope that some of the younger people who are not in younger is relative here in our community. This wouldn't be a, a, a third party service that's going to take away what's already here. It's this is an addition to what's already here. Well, those are those are um, factors that the board and the associated committees would uh, need to work out. Operational cost is always right here. It's it's right in front of us. And what we want to be able to do is provide the community services that they need and or have come to, um, I hate to use the word expect, but they've come to rely upon for what they moved in here for. And so for those reasons, we like to always look at options. A lot of people in the community don't know that from 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, until 6.15, you can just call our dispatch tell them where you're at, and within somewhere around uh, six to 10 minutes, a bus will be there to pick you up at your location and take you immediately where you need to go. With all that you're doing in this transportation department, talk about hobbies or hobby. What do you do outside of work? Well, I love to run. I love to run. And uh, you can find me uh, out on a 5K or 10K race course uh, in some city or community about 12 to 14 times a year. Yeah. I also, as the case might be, I love working on my older cars. I have a few different, people would call them classics. My family call them dad's old cars. And I also um, am quite into women's softball. Mm. Yeah, my, my daughter was quite a softball player a, in her day when she was younger and in high school and then in college, I was able to attend nearly every one of her games that she played in. And that credit goes to the management here for the Golden Rain Foundation. What would you like to say to Leisure World residents in general regarding the transportation department here? They should take a look at the transportation services we have here just so when they're a youngster, only 72 or 74, that they kind of know how the services work so that they are not as fearful of jumping in and doing something new when all of a sudden that day arrives when somebody is shown up and removed their car. When does it all end? When do you ride off into the sunset and say, leisure world? Well, I'm checking out. I know a very good um, machinist, owns a shop. We've used um, them for their limited services once or twice, and the owner is 89 years old. Mm -hmm. And I met him maybe um, about a decade ago. And every time that I've been to see him, um, I say, you're still working? And he says, yeah. And he says, and young man, I thank him for that when he says that. He says, you need to learn something. He says, you're more apt to fade away to nothing if you retire and you don't have something else to keep you as busy as what it is you've been doing for your whole career. And so really that boils down to you retire, you're more likely to pass away uh, from, I don't know, just boredom, I guess. So my answer to your question is, I've got a few more good years left in me. All right, very good. Grant Winford, Fleet and Transportation Manager. Thanks for being with, I us. To be with us. I want to thank you for inviting me in for this discussion. Thank you.